Welcome to Firefighting Today, the weekly video roundtable discussion show where we discuss all things fire service related. Firefighting Today is a production of PeteLamb.com. And now your host, Chief Peter Lamb. Welcome and good evening. Uh, this is the weekly roundtable. Tonight we're talking all about quints. So we're talking about the quint apparatus. Uh, we'll see what we can uh, come up with for uh, some discussion points for you, but a couple of housekeeping items as we always do. So the first one is uh, if you were watching us live on YouTube, uh, over on the YouTube channel, uh, feel free to use the live chat. You can uh, interact with us that way through the live chat. We'll get your questions right in there. Uh, this, this topic actually was a uh, viewer request from a couple of weeks ago. And if you are watching us uh, and you want to use Twitter, uh, we should be able to get that and get some interaction with you uh, on Twitter. Uh, we'll try to bring your questions right into, uh, right into the feed. So, First and foremost, um, let's uh, introduce the panel. We've got a short panel tonight. Uh, our thoughts for those that are uh, watching us. Uh, uh, Lane, who's been with us for uh, the past few episodes, has actually been deployed into uh, Texas. So uh, he's, he's down there with an urban uh, search and rescue team. So our thoughts are with him tonight for sure. So uh, we've got sort of an abbreviated panel tonight, but the, this is quality. It's not quantity. It's all about quality here. So let's introduce the panel. Uh, Rob Fling, Chief Fling. Good evening, everybody. Rob Fling, the next chief with the Dix Hills Fire Department on Long Island. And glad to be here tonight. Thank you again, Chief Lamb. All right. We like it. And Chief Cagno, say hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, once again, I'm honored to be uh, part of the podcast. Uh, John Cagno out of uh, North Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, 35 years in the fire service, retired battalion chief and founder of Leadit. All right. Very good. And last but certainly not slighted, Chief Joe Stein, say hello. Chief Lamb, thank you for having me. Uh, uh, my history is right now currently with Oak Grove Volunteer Fire Department, and I'm uh, the co-manager for Kill a Flashover. So thank you for having me. All right. We appreciate your uh, presence always. So we do have a bunch of viewers tonight. Good. That's uh, that's good to see. Again, if you want to interact, uh, go over to the live chat. So so let me tell you what what started this. It was a um, it was a an, a, um, a a viewer who was listening to us and said, and what's you know what about Quince? I think was the actual uh, uh, quick chat that said over, but. Uh, so we're going to talk about it. So let's get some basics. So quint obviously means, and I know this is very basic stuff, but let's not get silly here. Quint means that it does five things. So it's a pump, water in a tank, hose, aerial, and a complement of ground ladders. So it is the whole deal. Now, I think, uh, Chief Cagno, you had some thoughts earlier that you have noticed that some aerials are being purchased with pumps on them so they can feed themselves if they will but they may or may not have tanks was that what we talked about uh yeah basically uh i, I don't know if you'd call them concept apparatus there are tillers now that are being designed that have pumps um tanks maybe small capacity tanks um but they're tiller format um so i don't know how you'd lay lines with a tiller um unless you hand stretch them um, and then we talked about uh, tower ladders that, that are similar, um, but may not have, have a tank. Uh, so there is some concept type apparatus being developed outside of your ordinary quint type apparatus. I know Charlotte, Chief Charlotte runs uh, a pump and a small tank, like 300 gallons. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Um, I, I guess, you know, let's let's throw the grenade right out there. There are a lot of departments that view that if a um, if you go to a quint, you're losing manpower or you're you're doing you know, it's it's a it's a threat to manpower. Well, I, I just have to tell you, being a chief officer for as many years as I have been. If you bought one for that purpose, if you're a chief of department and you bought the apparatus to get rid of manpower, 
that speaks more about you. That's a whole nother weekly round table. That speaks more about you than it does about the apparatus. Uh, I did purchase a Quint. It was a strange set of circumstances, but um, I did purchase a Quint. We used it. Uh, so, so how, and, and I should talk about, there were a couple of cities. I think the first city that did this was St. Louis. And St. Louis just bought, thir- if my memory serves me, it was 32 quints that they bought uh, all at one. So everything was a quint. Well, that's a concept that takes a whole set of operating procedures that takes a whole, you know, there's a, there's a whole different light. I also believe that Richmond, Virginia did that at one point in time. Um, and I don't know where they are. Now, I do know that current data tells me that St. Louis is is moving back for a variety of, of reasons. So uh, I'll just go down the panel. I, I think I know the answer. I don't believe Chief Starnes has one. I believe Chief Cagno was a straight ladder department. And Chief Fling, you said you have a Quinn. Is that correct? Correct. And what's the uh, what's the length of the aerial on that and how much water? Uh, it's a 75 foot aerial. It has 500 in a tank and a 1250 pump. Okay. Mine actually was a 105 uh, medium duty ladder, uh, 500 of water. It was a 2000 GPM pump. We got about 800 feet of four inch hose on it. We were four, not five. Um, and a, a pretty good complement of ground ladders. It's probably not the 208 feet for a ladder company, but it's, it's short of that. But it was a full size medium duty stick with a pre piped waterway as well. Uh, Chief Cagno, what was your standard aerials up there in North Providence? Uh, we ran strictly uh, truck companies, 110 foot man mount aerial uh, E1. Okay. Um, so I guess my question is what's the difference? If it, it, and, I'll, and I say what's the difference in this regard. I always get in trouble when I say what's the difference. But for the purposes of discussion, in my department, I replaced a standard aerial ladder. The manning was the same. I didn't lose any men. I didn't gain any men. And we ended up buying the truck that had additional capabilities. I wasn't going to get any more men, but we had additional capabilities. I think the first question that comes up whenever this discussion starts is something to the effect of, well, is it a ladder truck? Or is it an engine company? I pull up, what do I do first? Am I a ladder or am I an engine? Um, so, you know, whatever, let's, uh, let's have that discussion. Um, uh, John, you, you tell me first, I pull up, if, if your ladder one was not just a ladder truck and it was in fact a Quint, what difference would that have made to you? Uh, probably nothing at all. It would it depend on a rival order and uh, what we were presented with when, we, when we got there. Uh, obviously, if we were operating with a Quint and we were the first two unit, we would go to work as an engine company. Um, if we weren't the first two unit, we maybe we were arriving second, we would probably work as a truck company um, or, or if necessary, uh, lay a supply line. So again, um, you have your primary role and then your ancillary role, your secondary role or purpose based on what, what your apparatus is specifically designed for. But if we had, in fact, a Quint, I, I know it would have to do with a rival sequence. Okay, so a rival sequence becomes part of the puzzle. All right, that seems to make sense. Um, is it, it, does it cause task confusion? That is, you know, people say engine companies do certain things, truck companies do certain things. If I'm on a Quint, suddenly I don't know how to do that. Chief Ling, you want to you wanna dive in? Um, we, well, we are, our Quint operates, um, and I have to tell you, it operates fantastic. Um, we do the same thing uh, Chief Cagno does. We operate on order of arrival. If the Quint goes first due, we have an obvious fire. The crew operates as an engine company. If we arrive first due with no visible fire, the crew will operate as a truck. If it arrives second due behind a, a standard engine, um, the engine is um, all of our all of our guys are instructed. The engine pulls past the address and leaves room for the ladder. 
Um, if we have to, we'll put it in a driveway. Um, I guess we're kind of unique that all of our engines are set up to operate as ladders, as ladder companies, as well as engine companies. Um, every engine in the department has a full set of truck tools on it, as well as an engine. We just happen out of my house. We just happen to have a ladder on top of one of them. Okay. Does it matter that some quints, again, we talked about, you've got a 75, I had a 105. Do, do you think that some quints get shortchanged on the stick or, um, you know, what, what do you think about that, uh, Rob? And uh, then I'll go over to Chief Kagan. This, we went with the 75 foot. Our ladder now is, I want, I want to say it's approaching about 10 years old. Um, we went with the 75 foot to keep it as a single axle. Now we can get the 107 foot, 105 foot, um on the single axle would still with 500 gallons of water um the 75 foot for us um probably is a little short um which is why we'll place it in the driveway if if we have to um and basically 99 percent of the time i would say we use it for its elevated master stream over the ladder Okay, that's a conversation we should have. Um, Joe, I'm going to get to you in a minute. We'll start talking about streams or what have you. But uh, Chief Cagno, did you want to did you want to comment on that? Yeah, um, to go along with what Chief Flynn was talking about. Um, when you're designing a piece of apparatus like that, uh, you know, 75 feet could be a problem. Sometimes the setbacks, you know, you're talking 40, 50 feet, maybe more. Um, you might not even be able to reach the roof with a 75 foot stick. Um, you chose to go with a standard aerial 105 foot, um, which gives you a little bit more of a reach, a little bit more of a scrub area. Um, I think that's more important. So if you're going to go with a quint versus a standard ladder or truck company, um, I think you need to maximize your aerial reach. So, you know, I, I would make a suggestion that you make it at least 100 feet or more. Um, the have, worst thing that could happen is, uh, you know, to, to be carrying an aerial device and not be able to reach the roof. Yeah, we have um, we have houses that the 75 reaches fine, and we have houses that we won't get anywhere near with 100 foot. Yeah, that that happens too. Yeah, you know, so we were kind of we were kind of in the middle, so we decided to go with the single single axle, um, basically because it's maneuverability um getting it down it's a, it's a smaller truck getting it down some of the streets that we have are very narrow um and and it's worked out well um if we were to respec it now and, and we were looking for initial purchase now i think the 105 or 107 whatever it is ours is a pierce um the ascender that uh, pierce makes now would probably be at the top of the list yeah. so you would design specific in that instance because you are your narrow street so and, and i think that's the, the whole key is you know what is your primary role on the apparatus and what's the secondary or ancillary purpose of that apparatus that's all important if you can't fit it you, you got to go with it. maybe a firehouse can't handle the weight of a bigger truck company and you have to go with something smaller yeah, a couple couple of things if I could dive in. I, I, I'm really having trouble with that primary secondary role. Um, that's that's a, an issue that, I, that let's, we'll talk about that for a minute. I did have a Twitter comment, but I did not get the whole comment. Uh, the Twitter comment was um, the it, it, let me just read it exactly. Um, I have two comments that I've got to get to you. And that is the biggest issue I see with the Quint is the inability, and then it was cut off. So I didn't, uh, I didn't get that whole comment. The other comment coming out of the chat room is one of the big issues I see is departments use the Quint concept to try to do both engine and truck duties simultaneously, and it backfires big time. So let's let's discuss that for for a second. But first and foremost, uh, I'm proud to uh, have uh, we have uh, Chief Lou LaPierre with us. Uh, Lou, just say hello, if you will. Uh, just uh, say hello to the audience. Tell them where you're from, if you would. Hi, Pete. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, Lou LaPierre, Smithville, Rhode Island. I'm working, so sorry I'm late. 
That's all right. You're forgiven. You're uh, you're forgiven. And just quickly, uh, Lou, do you are you running quints? You had some you had some squirts at one point. Uh, do you have any quint apparatus currently, Chief? Uh, no, no. Closest thing that we have is a, a you know a ladder truck has a, has a pump and uh, some pre connects and very limited amounts of uh, uh, feeder hose. But yeah, okay. we, we we ran the telesquirts back in the in the eighties and. Um, it was an interesting adventure, but uh, it didn't really work that well for us. Right, right, exactly. Um, so let's go to this question that was uh, that was thrown out uh, from from Ethan, and that is a, a department using the Quint concept to try to do both engine and truck duties simultaneously, and it backfires. I, just Pete's opinion, right? Because it's my show, because I can do that, so I'll just throw out an opinion. I just that that's procedural. I just I don't I don't even know why you're doing that. I mean I I, you, I don't know how you do that without assigning another company to it. You could certainly you could certainly put uh, another company out there and and attach it to the Quint. I think that's a reasonable suggestion. But I don't know how you you know you you take uh, you take the same number of personnel and because you got a, a fancy truck you're going to do something with it. Um, I I don't I don't know that. Um, the the response to that other tweet was the, the other uh, tweet was the inability to get a master stream in service, um, we, and there's no deck gun. Now again, let me just add that you know the quint that I used had a pre-piped waterway, and I could put a master stream in service just as good as a truck company. In fact, faster than a truck company because I could throw the first 500 gallons of water out of there that I carried on the tank. Not that that's a tactical br piece of brilliance, but um, so again, I, I wonder about that. Um, it, you know, we talk about the fire service all the time. It depends. It depends what kind of apparatus you, you know, Rob and I just talked about, he had a 75, I got a 105. It depends. He, I, my truck can do stuff his can't. Mine's dual axle. He can put his places I can't. So it depends. But I think about that, um, you know, the question that always comes up, well, let's talk about this stream thing while we got the fire behavior guy over in the corner. Um, you know, let's, let's talk about the ability to use elevated streams. Uh, Joe, you got thoughts on that? Well, it, you know, of course the elevated stream is, is in play very, very, very more effectively with a, with a aerial and having it there is absolutely the most effective way. Uh, the effectiveness of the stream depends on your strategy. And, uh, if you're fighting fire traditionally the way we fought fire for a hundred years then uh, the stick is absolutely the most effective way to get that that stream up there uh i we had a, a squirt you remember when they had squirts chief yeah well that's what i was just talking with chief lapier they had a couple of those units uh that was that was popular in the day yeah we had squirts and and we we had a very effective attack with a squirt horizontally several times on large commercial fire. Uh, it was just a big stream horizontal. It wasn't an elevated stream. Every time, you know, we've had the old adage, stick up building down. Remember that adage? I've, I've done that actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with it. <laughs> so, so the bottom line is, is where's the water going and what's your strategy? So without being a pro one or Pro one thing or the other, it's obvious that what we what we need to do is understand what we do and then and then design. Just like we we're talking about being ineffective, if you don't design the processes, it don't matter what you do. I mean, you're going to freelance your way into trouble, no matter which way you go. But I I personally will put water or a moisture into a, an air intake before I'll stick water down a hole right. on the air aircraft. Yeah, no, I, I think that, you know, the, the, the whole fire behavior flow paths have changed a lot of the uh, dynamics of when we're, when we're using aerial streams and, and what have you. And uh, I, I've often had a pet peeve that, you know, when I see aerial streams, you know, because I got a hundred foot stick, I should put it up a hundred feet and spray it down. And half of the water is not hitting the building of origin. 
in, uh, in what am I doing? I might be better off stuffing that nozzle through a third floor window and doing something a little more horizontal or doing something a little different. But I don't want to get into the tactics of it. Um, Chief LaPierre, since you were, were just a little tired, just give me a, a kind of your statement. What are you thinking when I say all about Quint? What's, what's your view on, on Quint apparatus? You've been around, you got 20, 30 years of service here. What, what are you thinking? Well, uh, you know, we, we, we had some success with, with our squirts when we used them. Um, very similar to what Joe was just saying, where, where you have a good rip and fire, you, 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 you stick the, the, the squirt up into the eave and you knock down an attic fire, or you, you know, you have a, have a barn going or something crazy like that. Um, but just doing like the reading that, that you sent out and, uh, you know, I, I listened to some of the uh, uh, different uh, programs that they used to do at FDIC with the Clint concept when it first came out. As for a fire department, from a management perspective, I, I think that it would be, be very expensive. Um, just the cost of the apparatus. I mean, you basically have a, buying an engine and a ladder in one apparatus for every book, you know, for all your stations or, or whatever the way they do it in st louis i would imagine that it's very costly and uh they're very highly technical devices so they're going to break easy especially with the barbarians that we hire to drive these things around um and here in the northeast with the four full seasons and the weather and the and the, and, and the cold and how it affects maintenance and things like that I, you know i mean it may work for some people but I, it, it's probably gonna it, it's gonna require a a lot of training and a lot of uh, coordination and, you know, everyone's going to know everybody's job because, you know, when you put those things to work, you could be first do second do third do and you, your whole perspective changes. You're not just the guy on an engine anymore. Okay. That makes some sense. Yeah. No, I think the whole, I, I you know, I got to tell you, when the thing first started with St. Louis, I, again, I think they were the first, we talked about that early on. Um, I think, you know, great, great test, great beta test. But an engine company today is about half a million dollars. A Quint's probably a million. And, and the, you know, pro those numbers are probably higher right now, depending on how what you do. The other thing is that if you put your whole fleet um, as all Quint's and then you start chasing rescue calls with a Quint, yeah. you know what I mean? You do an EMS support. Uh, with a Quint, if that's what you're running, if that's the only thing you're running. I would just tell you, I, I have a couple of case histories. And Rob, if you've got any successful case histories that we could capsulize, I'd like to, I'd like to share them. Um, but I had two, two situations. So my department was uh, not unique. I mean, we had a good water supply in most areas. And then we had some places where hydrants were spaced out considerably farther. Um, second story fire in a colonial, um, engine pulls in first, he's going to work. Quint pulls up second, does not have a, per he does not have a position. There's nothing he can do. He's way too far off the street. No, it's not because somebody parked wrong. It just, he was in suburbia, long shot to the house, trees in the way. It just wasn't going to happen. Long, long lay of a line. So we're waiting for the second due engine. And I looked over at the Quint driver and I said, pull your two and a half inch pre-connected line, take it over to the engine company guy, drop the nozzle on the ground and give him your 500 of water. Now, I could not have done that with the ladder truck, obviously. I would not have had that option to be able to have additional water supply on the scene with a second second piece. The Quint was not told to lay in as a second do. It was going to work as a ladder company, but the building configuration grounds and whatever just did not allow it to work. I think the second greatest time that I saw at work was, was very interesting. And again, this was not a plan. I, I don't want anybody to think that I was wicked smart. We got lucky a lot of times and we're able to maximize it. We were called mutual aid to another department for a working house fire, we were called as a ladder company. I got up there a little bit quicker uh, than the engine company did. Maybe or maybe not, I was sparking the fire ahead of time. Maybe, you know, I, we won't discuss that because I don't think the statute of limitations is out, but I was in the neighborhood. And, uh, <laughs> um, 
the, the officer in charge looked at me and he said, uh, my second truck's not getting out. I said, where's the hydrant? So he told me where the hydrant was. And I said to the Quint, lay a line and give it to them. So they laid a fetal line in and tied it into the first two engines pumper. And he then said to me, as they were laying out the line, he said, can you guys get the roof? And I said, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm talking about capabilities here. And that was a rare set of circumstances. I laid a feeder line, not to me. It's no more work to me. I'm not running a pump and gave it to him. So I had the capability to lay hose. I gave him his water supply and we operated as a ladder company and took the roof. I, I just, I would not have had that capability. And I think when you're in a small department, at one point we were running 13 men on a shift we, we, we ended up at nine. I think we're back to 11 up there now uh, is where they are. You've got to get the most. You've got to have the most things. Now, I, I will say that a Quint is much like a Swiss Army knife. You know, it does a lot of things okay. It's not as good as a knife. It's not as good as, a, you know what I mean? It, it, whenever you get something that does multitasking, it doesn't do everything completely correct. So um, I think that that's part of it. Let me just check. Um, uh, let me just get uh, one more Twitter. The local Quint to me specced a deck gun on board. So there's a uh, comment from uh, a Twitter comment that that's relying on that first uh, uh, question we had about the uh, 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 able to put a stream. So Rob, I'm going to go to you, but Chief Cagno, go first if you would. All right. Getting back to what Lou was saying about uh, the Northeast and uh, issues with uh, the change of climates and, uh, you know, the uniqueness of that type of apparatus and the maintenance problems that, you know, we incur with them types of vehicles. Um, I think the one obstacle that everybody sees, and I think somebody mentioned this earlier, it might have been yourself, Pete, is that a Quint's a manpower killer. I don't perceive that at all. Um, like you said, it is a Swiss Army nice of sorts. It can do a, a little bit of everything, uh, but not everything perfectly. You have to design your apparatus based on needs, based on your, your staffing levels, um, based on your, your demographics, obviously. It's all common sense type of stuff. It's nothing I'm saying here. It's going to surprise anybody. But, you know, if you're going to purchase a Quint, what is its primary role going to be most of the time? Like you said earlier, if it's going to be doing EMS runs half the time, you need to take that into consideration. Um, if it's going to be doing truck duty most of the time, well, then you need to beef it more on a truck end of things. Maybe you need to get a bigger stick. Um, so it, I think it all comes down to, you know, specking the apparatus properly. What you know, whether we say it's a quint, and we're going to use it as a quint, or we're, we're purchasing it as a ladder company with additional capabilities because it has pumps, holes, and water. Um, I, I think we get hang, hung up on the name, and that becomes a problem, and and then people see it as a manpower killer. Um, but it's not that at all. Yeah, uh, I guess I, I don't know. And we're having uh, for the for the viewers at home, uh, we're having some trouble with John's video. Just uh, bear with us. We're working through this thing. So uh, you may have seen some pixelated video there, but we're uh, working our way through this. See, I don't see it as a primary secondary role. I just think it gives a small department more capabilities. You know, if I listen, if I had a four man truck company sitting next to me, I wouldn't even have this discussion. But if I don't have a, you know, if, if you've got very limited resources, um, can you maximize those resources? Um, the question just came over Twitter, uh, and I thank you for that. So what's the deal about hose beds? Well, you obviously don't have a full hose bed uh, on a quint. So you do have some limitations on a quint without question. We could carry 800 feet of four inch. Uh, Chief Fling, what, do you, what did you have? Um, one of the things that when we spec'd our Quint, it had to carry as much hose as one of our regular engines. Um, we have 800 feet of five inch. We have a hundred inch and three quarter off the front bumper. We have two 200 foot inch and three quarter pre-connects. 
We have 300 inch and three quarter over 300, two and a half for a long stretch. And we have 600 feet of two and a half. Okay. Um, it's in the, um, it's right behind the crew cab as, as cross lays. So it's really easy to stretch. Um, to get back to the uh, deck gun, no deck gun discussion, we have a blitz fire on the truck that if we have a heavy volume of fire, um, we'll pull a we'll pull a blitz fire with a two and a half um, while we get the ladder set up. Um, as far as a manpower killer, I, I don't think it is at all. And I think anybody that says it's a manpower killer is using the quint as a scapegoat. Because if you're going to cut staffing, you can cut sca staffing on an engine and you can cut staffing on the truck. Are you going to say, I'm going to put, I have a company of six guys, I'm going to put three on a quint? Well, that's not the truck's fault. That's somebody making that decision. That piece of apparatus can do just as much work as the engine does or the truck does. It's not the truck that does the work. Yeah, it's all there, but it's the guys on the rig to do the work. And you can have six guys on an engine. My truck may roll out with four guys. I don't know what I'm getting when the tones go off. Um, we can operate that truck with four guys. We can operate that truck with six guys. And our procedures dictate what we do with limited staffing. Yeah, well said. I mean, listen, there have been stories. There's no question. There have been stories across the country where chiefs have said, I'm going to close a company and we'll buy a Quint instead. I mean, that, that story is not fiction. That actually does happen. I think it speaks, you know, I, I, I'm embarrassed to say that as a chief officer. I, I wouldn't make that decision. Um, I, I don't know what kind of duress I would have to be under. I'm sure I, you know, um, I'm, I'm sure I've been in some sort of duress like that, but I don't, I don't think you do it. And I agree. I think you could, you know, I had a 105 foot stick. What's the difference? What, what is the difference than the truck I replaced, except I had some more stuff to go with it. Rob, do you have any case histories where it, uh, you know, where you did something or it gave you an extra capability in, in any case? Uh, lots. Uh, that truck has been first due or second due at a hell of a lot of fires. Um, I can never remember where it's actually been, been a problem. Um, like we had discussed before, everybody, all of our people are trained. You know, we know if we see fire, we're going to work as an engine. Uh, we'll even go as far as you know what, if the second due company is going to operate as a ladder, they're actually going to stick in service. Either that chauffeur is qualified on the ladder to use it, or in a bind, a pump's a pump. We can always put the chauffeur of the quint on the turntable, and we can take somebody from the second due apparatus to operate the pump if it's working as an engine. We also spec... Um, we thought maybe one day that we would run into the issue where we were operating as an engine and we would want to use the master stream. Um, we can use, we can use the pump and the master stream at the same time, but we went as far as op, um, putting an intake in the rear of the truck that actually feeds right through to the, to the ladder. So we don't have to interrupt any type of, um, you know, pumping operation if we want to feed the ladder from a second engine. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, what are the downsides? Let's talk about the downsides. So we heard about the size of the hose bed. We heard about maybe not having a deck gun. And again, you know, blitz fire is, it, you know, it's a tremendous piece of equipment. You know, I, I, I don't think it replaces a deck gun, but it is clearly a powerful tool in the arsenal. It has, uh, without it, has much a, it has some benefits over a deck gun when you think about it, you know. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm a want, fan. You want to see something impressive, put a blitz fire in the foyer of a 5,000 square foot house that's well involved and watch what happens. Yeah, yeah. No, I, it, yeah, you got the McMansions. I think we all have the McMansions now. I think it, uh, it makes a difference. Uh, there's no question. So uh, absolutely. So what are the, uh, Lou, what are the downsides? We talked about hose bed. We talked about, you know, trying to do too much. I think Ethan's question was, you know, I, I, listen, I'm going to put three guys on the truck and tell them they're a ladder company and an engine company. I think that's, that's not the truck's fault. But any pros and cons you see, Chief LePin? 
Um, well, some, some, just with some of the things that, um, that I ran into with the, uh, the telescripts that we ran and they, they, they weren't quints. Um, they were close, but they weren't, um, you know, fitting them in the stations. If you're, if you're running traditional engine companies and you want to go to a quint type situation, I mean, getting these fire trucks that are being built today to fit in a station that was built in 1939, um, is, it can be challenging. Um, the, the, the problem that we had with ours is they were overloaded. They were very heavy. Um, it was, uh, the way that was just, the flaw. um, in the size of the aerial, um, we were running 55 foot telescripts that had, uh, had like an escape ladder on it. And we were trying to use that aerial device, um, in certain situations and you have no reach with that. Um, so some of these quints, I know they come 75 feet, even in some, you know, hundred, whatever, but, um, you know, the, the, the spec of the aerial is certainly going to limit your capabilities when you want to uh, raise that thing up in the air. Um, and also, you know, how it arrives on the scene, you know, the, the, the order in which it arrives on the scene. We tried to make it so that our, uh, our squirts would arrive first and then all of our support companies would, would work off that truck and feed that truck. Um, and we were able to knock down some, some pretty big fires uh, using, using the telesquirt. Um, but... Uh, it definitely the aerial, the size of the aerial that, that you're specking out. And the trucks just get bigger and bigger. Where do you put them and can you fit them? And they're very expensive. And some of the things that kind of crossed my mind. Okay, very good. Um, another experience, uh, one from Ethan. Uh, his city had four separate instances where the quint ran out of water prior to having a supply line charged. So if you got a, now my tank was a 500 tank. I don't know, uh, Ethan, if you could comment, uh, was it a five or a 300? And, and how does that relate to your pumpers? I was in a unique position. I had a 750 water tank pumper. I had a thousand pump, but you know, a tank with a thousand gallons of water. Um, and the latter previously had no water on it. So I gained 500 gallons of water in my response, my first out the door response capability uh, so that that helped in some degree but uh one of the downsides ethan is talking about is the small tank and he's got some case histories that uh that lead to that joe you got something no i was going to say running out of water is a possibility anytime you go hmm? your your responsibility as an engineer is to have a patent water supply so uh, you can run out of water on an engine you run out of water all the time i mean the concept is that you have to manage that and you have to have water there so you know if you have a chief on scene or you're or you're pulling into the neighborhood and you see a column you know you're going to work it the officer of the truck should be saying guys we're hitting a hydrant and we're laying in right you got you got to have a patent water supply you don't have it yeah I, we get back to procedures and training we're rural and we teach every floor requires another alarm so that all that's for is water and manpower so if you if you go there and it's two floors you get another alarm in our in our system it's volunteer mm -hmm. uh but the, mainly because we we don't have a lot of places we can lay in a, a sufficient water supply to keep master streams flowing that's another thing in volunteer by not having aerial devices you're not typically flowing that much water because everything's being delivered by hand for the most part, unless you get gun your blitz fires working. So I think I think part of this is simply training and process. We make excuses with it, but it's mostly training and process. Yeah, I, I think in some cases that's correct. To answer the question, Ethan's uh, was saying they ran out of water. Well, it, it becomes a little explanatory now. Engine companies in his city run with a thousand gallons of water, and the quint, quint runs with three hundred. That's you know that's a pretty small tank. You know you you pull pull a line or go to work with that. That's a, that's a pretty small tank. Chief Cagno, you had wanted to jump in a minute ago. You want to dive in? Yeah, I just wanted to go back to what you said earlier about, uh, you know, someone saying that uh, they're, they're going to uh, shut a firehouse. Hang on a second, Chief. You got my audio? Try again. You got my audio okay? Yeah, I do now. Um, I was going to go back to what you said earlier about, uh, you know, 
shutting firehouses and combining companies. Uh, I, I think that's where all this fear comes in relative to the word Quint. Um, like you said, we can maximize capabilities with the shortage of manpower. So we're bringing more resources to the fire with the same amount of manpower with that type of vehicle. But it, it, again, it comes down to a vehicle being properly specced and then the procedures to go along with it, like uh, Chief Fling said. Yeah, how, how much, let me ask you, how much of what we do on a, on a daily basis, isn't a lot of this policies and procedures? Absolutely. It, it is the question that we had, I think we had it offline a week or so ago. We talked about the um, engine company and truck company. We had that discussion a couple of weeks ago. And, and offline, we said something to the effect of, well, if I pull up and I've got the Quinn and there's a lady on the second floor that's trapped, what do I do? Right. And so that's the age. I mean, if you want to confuse a fireman, go into the kitchen in the morning, throw that one on the table. And by noon, there'll be a heck of a fight. Um, but the answer is you do what you're supposed to do. If you have water and that's the best choice, put water on the fire. If you think you can make a grab with a 24 foot ladder and one guy, then you, you I mean, there's no I think sometimes we look for absolutes. And we, you know, I, I thought uh, Chief LaPierre's comment was great about the truck is too heavy. They're all too heavy because if you sit in a fire station, somebody says, oh, you know, we should have three of those. Get four of these, put seven of those and off we go. And, and, and I think trucks are being delivered borderline overweight. They're being delivered borderline overweight. And I think we go in and we we just kind of pile on some stuff. Uh, uh, Chief LaPierre, was that the case? I mean, do you see that as a as a as a problem sometimes? Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course, you got to have everything. To you never know what you're going to run into, so you got to have everything on the truck. And um, geez, isn't that a nice new neat tool that we saw at that trade show? We'll figure out how to use it later, but put it on the truck, you know. <laughs> um, and I mean, a quint is just a really like you said the big swiss army knife you ever tried to use a screwdriver on the swiss army knife it doesn't, doesn't work <laughs> it requires yeah. some forethought how are you going to use it, it needs to be, it needs to be planned strategized thought about talked about and, and ironed out uh before you even think about going down that road um because of all of these issues that have cropped up and um that, that we're talking about i mean it's, we're not you know this, this history's already been written uh They've, they've been doing this and they had they ran into the same problems in St. Louis back in the 80s, uh, how, how they were going to run these things and how they ended up running them with, with something different. It evolved. Right. right. I, I think that in my case, I replaced a straight ladder with a quint. Ladder was the same size, but I had some additional capabilities. So I didn't I didn't really ever feel guilty about that decision. I, I was not going to buy another straight stick. Um, we just put, we just bought a ladder with some extra stuff on it, uh, being pumped and, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, for us, it helped the additional pumping capacity, helped the ISO rating. We had a, had a, you know, I mean, there's some, there's some other stuff. I, I don't say that's the reason you go and buy one. But I think that in my case, it was a pretty unique set of circumstances. We gained some benefits by that by just replacing a straight ladder with this Quint. Manpower didn't change, nothing changed, um, nothing else happened, uh, but we had some additional uh, capabilities. As we start to wind it down, Chief Fling, so Quint's uh, yay, nay, you know, limitations, let's kind of just give me a summary statement and see where you want to go with this. Um, I say yay. You know, it's it's just a piece of apparatus and it's going to do exactly as you train on it and plan for what it's going to do. Um, I, I think a lot of people have a preconceived notion um, about what the apparatus does and what it's capable of, um, much like everything else that we do. You know, oh, you can't put fire out from outside because, well, that's how we always done it. We have to go inside. Well, a lot of places have dedicated engine companies and dedicated truck companies. Well, you know what? 
I never had that. You know, our, our Quint solved the problem of we needed another engine and time came for us to have an aerial device. And we were not going to go first do without water. And we needed an engine. So we combined the two. And for us, it works fantastic. Yeah. And it, well, it, good point. And Joe, uh, you know, Joe will speak to this. I think when we get over to Joe is that it's the system, it's the system you operate in. What does this tool fit? In? You know, if I was at if FDNY, I probably don't need a Quint. That's probably not my gig. Right. That's the, you know, you're going to get an engine in a truck on every, at least an engine in a truck on every alarm. Right. Right. And I, the problem that I have is that I think that, you know, departments like yours, Rob, uh, even Lou to some degree and, and Joe, certainly, you know, 70 per, 70% of America is a department closer to your size than it is Chicago and LA and, you know, San Diego and all of those things. Um, so I think that it, it depends on your system. Lou, as we begin to, to summarize here, what's, uh, what's your thoughts? Yay, nay, uh, pros, cons? Just kind of give me a generalized opinion on the Quint discussion. Oh, I'm not against them uh, or anything. I mean, if it, it should, it's your department. What works for you? You know, it's a tool. And if it works for you, then you then work with it. You know, what's your staffing? What's the, the spacing between districts? Where's your, how, how long is your second due company? Uh, you know, I mean, it, it, some departments, you know, with, with, you may be operating alone. You may not have an aerial device. Maybe your second through company's, you know, 15 minutes away. Maybe you need to lay a line. Maybe you need to have a ladder. You know, that might be a great thing. Um, it, it's, it's really kind of case dependent, I, I, I would imagine. But, um, you know, we had the same thing with when we spec'd out our last ladder truck. There was a big debate over putting a pump on it and a water tank and, and, and some of those things. You know, it's if, if, if you don't have, you know, uh, you know, for fully staffed engine companies, uh, you know, coming two minutes behind you, you know, it may not be a bad idea. You, know, you might be able to do something with that. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. I think that, um, you know, when you talk about the, um, it also depends how many aerial devices you have. If you have a regular ladder, if you have a, uh, you know, if you've got a second ladder or a third ladder or however big your agency is, I think it. Uh, I think it makes a difference. Uh, John, what are your uh, what are your summary thoughts on the on the Quint? Yay, nay, pros, cons, whatever you want to. <laughs> I I agree pretty much with everybody else is saying. I'm not against them uh, or from. I I think it it goes down to specifics with your department. Um, you know, the rival sequence is the big big factor depending on the size of your department. Um, if you don't have two or three engine companies, um, you, you may need to have a combination type of uh, apparatus. So it all has to do with uh, department size, staffing, demographics, uh, type of duty you do most often. Uh, and then again, I also agree with what Louis is saying. We, we tend to overstuff apparatus to do more uh, than it's quite capable. So uh, I, I would say that I'm not pro and I'm not con. I, I think it has to do with specific spec of the apparatus for the department needs. What you need is what you purchase, not what I need. In our Providence, we don't we don't need it. It didn't it wouldn't work. Um, in another department, it, it might be ideal. Like what, in Rob's department, it works perfect, and for obvious reasons. Let me just before I go to Joe Stans, let me ask you a question. You said something that was a mouthful. It would not work in your agency. Tell, tell me why. Tell me why if you took your ladder truck out of the way and back to Quint in with the same staffing, tell me why it wouldn't work. I don't, I don't think it would work because it would minimize what, what else we, we normally carry on our truck company. In other words, we would lose, lose space for other things. Um, our truck doubles basically as a heavy rescue um so we would lose that compartment space um when we have sufficient engines with sufficient water supply so that would be the reason it wouldn't be that it would be a a, a killer so to speak uh but from my perspective i you know we had the same issue when we decided to go with a plain stick and not a pre-piped waterway 
Um, there was reasons for why we didn't do that, but you know, we, we, we couldn't lose the compartment space. So, um, although there's apparatus out there now that, you know, could do both, I, I would imagine, you know, they're building them bigger and, and better. So, but at, at the time, you know, we would be losing compartment space. So it wouldn't have worked. We needed that for more, um, obvious reasons uh we get you know tool storage now i'm not talking typical truck tools but you know uh, heavy rescue type tools like um <clears throat> hearse tools and things like that that were needed to be carried on the rig at the time all right and so let's go to joe joe a little little philosophy i i wait for the old guy and the gray-haired guy wait a minute that's me um, no, <laughs> a little, little wisdom, Joe, we, we heard a lot of stuff and you're, you're kind of a stickler on this, this issue. Um, how, how, how important is the system that you work in as it relates to the resources you have and what have you, you want to just spend a couple of minutes on that as we, as we summarize. Well, I, I think one of the worst things we do is we think we're all alike, uh, we, we believe that I can take your SOP and go to work. I think if you're going to put a quint in your system, you don't have an aerial device today. I think a quint would be a natural transition for especially low staffing, mineral staffing areas where that's the case. Copying a truck company from New York or from a, a major metro fire department may or may not work for you. It depends on your staffing, your response, your response area. I think you got to get in, in the boardroom and work a long time before you go to the training ground, a long time before you go to the manufacturer, a long time before you go to the fire. And, and you gotta, you've got to set that up, and that's got to be your system and your way of doing it. So you, don't, you know not to run out of water, so don't run out of water. You know not, you know not to do things with too, few, too little staffing. You do things in serial instead of parallel. If you've got the staffing and you're a major department, and you got stations that can see each other's doorway from an aerial device in the front pad, then it's different than a station that's 10 miles away from it. So I think, I think we have to design and engineer our response as it relates to our, our variables, our critical variables. So the system response is, is dictated by what we want the outcome to be. And we engineer the outcome. Now, we can always go to a we can always go to a fire that demands more than we can carry. And I learned something from the logistics manager for Chesterfield Fire Department years ago. He used to say, never engineer an engine over 80% of its GBWR. He said, because it it'll, will have a problem later on sitting in the station with that much weight on it. So he never loaded in, in any apparatus more than 80% of his GBWR, no matter what it was. And that was, to me, that was smart. It was intelligent. And, that, and he bought trucks. He bought another truck if he couldn't do that. Uh, if you go look at Oak Grove today, there'll be four tools of the same tool on the truck if you're not careful. Not necessarily everywhere, but a lot of times, if one's enough, you might need another one, so you add another one. All of a sudden, you put 100 pounds extra on the truck. So you, you have to engineer it for what you do. And you have to know how you do it, and you have to train to how you do that. You know, we're talking about the responding trucks to, like, medical call. Chief Brunacini put the tender into effect years ago. The, tr the truck company, where it was just a squad-looking vehicle, and it, the, the, the truck folks just went and got in that vehicle to run medical calls. And there was a big outcry about, well, we're going to get there. We're going to need the ladder. Well, that, wasn't, that didn't materialize. That was never a problem. Because they had 13, 15, 18, 20, whatever ladder companies, and they just didn't have that problem because the alarm would put another company in a spot, just like you would if the company was out on a call on a wreck or something or automobile accident, and it did it. So your process is everything. Your critical variables and what you run, like what do you run most of? What, what, well, how are you staffing your department? You, most of the time, we don't even need one-tenth of the stuff we carry to 90% of our call. But we carry it because of the 10 percenters. And, 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 and that's, that's the whole deal. We have, to, we have to be smart about how we engineer 
And then we have to be smart about how we process, design it. Then we have to be smart about how we, how we do our work. You know, if you get a city manager who's wanting to cut the budget and only 80% of your budget is uh, salaries and, and benefits, and he wants to cut 30% of it, you, you're going to cut salary and benefits. That's what you're going to cut. And that's life. But you don't cut it and call it a quint and, and justify it because a quint can do it more efficiently. We don't have an efficiency measurement in the fire service. I don't know of one. Do you? I don't know of any efficiency measurement we have. We measure getting out on time in 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and all that stuff. But we don't measure any efficiency on doing our job. So I don't know how we would ever do it. Anyway, bottom line is you have to do your system, not not Pete Lambs, not Joe Starnes, not Robert Flings, but you got to do your system. You got to engineer your system. You got to train your system to handle what's going to happen. When they dial 911, can you do it? It's not copying New York. It's not copying Phoenix or San Diego or Houston. It's, co it's engineering your system. All right. I'm done. I like it. I like it. Thank you. That's that's good stuff. I just will leave with this parting shot. The first time I was involved in buying a pumper, um, we're getting ready to put put it in service. And and so I had somebody that uh, I'll leave the names out because a couple of the guys on the panel know who it was. And the, and the conversation went like this. Put everything on the apparatus floor near the, the brand new pumper. Anything you're going to use on every run, put on the truck. The radio, but, right? Put anything you use on every single run, put on the truck. Anything you use every other run, put on the truck. Anything you use once a week, put on the truck. Once a month, whatever it was. And then finally, there was this whole pile of crap on the floor. And, and it was a very real life, what are we carrying all of this stuff for? And is there a better way? It was, a, it was the greatest slap in the forehead reality check uh, I, I ever had. And it, uh, it made a lot of sense, quite frankly. So folks listening, that is our uh, discussion all about Quint's. Uh, we, we answered some stuff. I'm sure we left some folks with questions. Uh, be happy to, to answer some of those. Uh, just you can watch this video anytime, obviously. Uh, that's not a problem. But uh, there will not be a show next week because it is the Labor Day holiday in, uh, in the U.S. So there will not be a show next week. We will resume and uh, we'll throw some stuff out on uh, social media and all of that stuff. So uh, thanks for being with us. Thanks for listening. And uh, we will see you next week.